Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today our group will present about slurry loop reactor and bubble column reactor. Our group consists of six members, so which are Sheikh Faisal Masara binti Uthman 112280, Nur Atika binti Azmi 112281, Nur Atimah binti Ali 112283, Nur Aisha binti Rajali 112287, Azin Khairia binti Osman 112308, and Nur Alia Sofia binti Musli 112311. Okay, I will present about slurry loop reactor. First of all, what is mean by slurry reactor? Slurry reactor are three phases reactor, meaning that they can use to react solids, liquids and gases simultaneously. They usually consist of catalyst, which is the reactant, ga the reactant gas is put to the liquid and dissolve, then it diffuses onto the surface catalyst. The catalyst usually is in a solid form, either in powder or granular form. Slurry loop reactor is one of the type slurry reactor. Why we call it as slurry loop reactor? As you can see in this picture, the reactor is in the loop shape. Hence, that's why we call it as slurry loop reactor. Concept of slurry loop reactor. First, particle dispersion. Collection of a solid catalyst. Particles dispersed in a liquid phase slurry. Second, mixing patterns. The mixing pattern is very intensive and well defined, so it will mix well. Third, axial pump. The slurry is circulating at a high velocity impelled by an axial pump. Okay, what is axial pump? Axial pump is a common type of pump that is essentially consists of a propeller in a pipe. The propeller can be driven directly by a sail motor in the pipe or by electric motor or petrol engines mounted to the pipe from the outside or by a right angle drive shaft that fits the, the pipe. So this is the image of this is the image of axial pump. So how the axial pump work? Let's watch this video together. Axial pumps move fluid in a straight line. Most axial pumps are located at an elbow in the piping system. A drive shaft extends into the process flow with a propeller attached to the end. When the propeller turns, the blades pull the fluid down the shaft line. My name is Shifa Maisara Osman, matrix number 1182280. Next, I will explain on the application of slurry loop reactor. So, the most typical application of slurry loop reactor is polymerization. The prime example of polymerization is the polymerization of ethylene into high density polyethylene. On the short form, is called HDPE. For your information, HDPE can be produced by using three types of process and one of them is slurry process by using slurry loop reactor and the other two process are called solution process and gas phase process. First of all, polyethylene can be used to make food packaging, shopping bags, dustbins, detergent bottles and also water pipes. Next is manufacture of HDPE by using slurry loop reactor. So in this process, there are two types of catalysts that are used. The first one is Ziegler Nata organometallic catalyst. It is a titanium compound with an aluminium alkyl. And the second one is an in inorganic compound known as Phillips type catalyst. A well-known example of Phillips type catalyst is chromium trioxide on silica. The second one is, this process will operate at relatively low pressures at around 10 to 80 atmospheric pressure. And the type, typical temperature range is between 350 to 420 Kelvin. And lastly, during the polymerization process, hydrogen will mix with the 18 to control the chain length of polymer. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
My name is Nur Atika Binti Asmi. My metric number is 1182281. So today I would like to talk about the advantages of the slurry loop reactor. So as we can see in this diagram, we have six advantages of the slurry loop reactor and we will go through one by one. So for the first, it enhances mass transfer. In the loop reactor, it has internal circulating tubes that makes the fluid circulate at a high velocity of 20 meter per second or higher that will significantly enhance the mass transfer. Okay, for the second, it is very efficient heat exchange because in the loop, it has a heat exchanger that will remove the heat they are formed. For the third, we, uh, we have the it will provide rapid and uniform distribution of reaction component. Okay, so in the loop, it has a static mixer that will result in more uniform concentration and temperature distribution compared to a steel tank reactor. So for the fourth, it will lower it has lower environmental emission. Okay, so it is proven by the US based company for the manufacture of phosphorus pentoxide, it was able to reduce the volume by half and also reduce the power consumption by half also. And for the fifth, we have a good solid suspension. So the loop the loop reactor good at maintaining a slurry of solid particles in a liquid so they otherwise will float. And then for the last, it has simple construction and ease of operation. So now we will move on to the disadvantages of the slurry loop reactor. So we have four disadvantages. So first, particle size distribution is difficult. Okay, the particle size distribution is difficult to modify and small particle size requires substantial amount of surfactants that will lower the surface tension. For the second, high attrition of catalyst. So, loss of catalyst that arise from mixed particle fragmentation and surface abrasion. For the third, high cost. So, a lot of cost is involved in the design, procurement and functioning of impeller. So, the loop reactor needs to have an impeller. So the impeller itself will cost you high. So the impeller is needed to perform the mixing of multi-phase fluids. And for lastly, we have the high probability of side reaction in the liquid phase due to the liquid or solid ratio in the multi-phase flow. My name is Nur Aisha Mithrajali. My metric number is 1182287. I will explain to you about bubble column reactor. Bubble column reactor is usually a cylindrical vessel with a gas distributor at the bottom. And it is intensively utilized as multi-phase reactors in chemical, petrochemical and biochemical industries. It is multi-phase reactors so it can work in two phases and three phases. Um, two phases is in liquid or gas and three phases is in liquid or gas or particle. Large reactor diameter and large reactor height are required in industry. As you can see in the picture, it is the picture of the bubble column reactor in industry. Um, it is really high and large because in industry, we need to generate a product in a large scale. Next, the theory about bubble column reactor. Firstly, the gas phase is dispersed into liquid phase using specific gas distributors at the bottom of the column. You can see here, uh, the gas phase is dispersed into liquid phase. And the net liquid flow may be co-current or counter-current to the gas flow direction or maybe zero. And, and sparges, you can see sparges at the bottom of the column. It is like a porous plate 
it will generate uniform size bubbles and distribute the bar and distribute the gas uniformly. Next, the working principle of the bubble column reactor. As you can see in the slide, it is the diagram of the bubble column reactor. Firstly, the liquid flows in from a pipe attached to the lower right of the reactor and flows out of the reactor from a pipe attached to the upper right part of the vessel. You can see here, uh, the liquid flows in here and flows out here. Secondly, gas flows in from the pipe attached to the lower left side of the reactor and flows out of the pipe attached at the top of the vessel. And the gas flows in here and flows out here. And thirdly, the separate component of the reactor attached to the left side of the reactor is used to inject heat through a carrying agent. And heat carrying agent is used to adjust the temperature of the column, uh, whether you need an endothermic reaction or exothermic reaction. And lastly, a bubbly flow is formed in the reactor. Once the reaction is underway, it is important to monitor the distribution of the bubbles in the reactor. This is because the, the distribution of the bubbles is have significant influence on the reaction process and have its own effect. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nurul Ademira Menteri Ali. Matrix number 1182283. Okay, today I will present about the types of flow regimes in the bubble column and also the types of bubble column reactor. First of all, there are three different types of flow regime in the bubble column, which are the first one is the homogeneous bubble flow, second one is the heterogeneous flow, and the last one is the slug flow. These three types of flow regime have different hydrodynamic characteristics, which is result in different rate of heat and mass transfer. Okay, the flow regime is dependent on a few factors, which are the superficial gas velocity, column diameter, liquid and gas phase properties, and the last one is distributor design. Okay. We go to the first type of bubble flow regime, uh, which is the homogeneous flow or also known as bubble flow. Homogeneous flow occurs at low gas velocities, typically uh, less than 0.05 millisecond. It characterized by uniformly small bubble size. This is due to the no coalescence and breakout bubble. Coalescence means two or more bubbles merge to form a bigger bubble, while bubble breakup is defined as splitting of bubble into smaller bubbles. Therefore, there is only a uniform small bubble size distribution. As we can see in the picture, uh, we just only see the small bubbles in this floor regime. Okay, next. Gas holdup distribution is readily uniform, therefore, bulk liquid circulation becomes insignificant. Okay, next. Uh, it applicable in most biochemical applications such as cultivation of bacteria, production of single protein, and treatment of sewage. Okay. The second one is the heterogeneous flow, or also known as churn turbulent flow. Okay. Heterogeneous flow occurs at high gas superficial velocities, which is greater than 0.05 millisecond. Okay. It characterized by different size, shape, and unsteady flow pattern of bubbles. Okay. In this flow regime, we can uh, the there is the mixture of small and large bubble. This is because due to the intense coalescence and breakup bubble that are lead to white bubble size. 
as we can see is the picture there is a small and bigger bubble size okay next is nine uniform gas product distribution that cause bulk liquid circulation in this flow regime okay the last one is prefer uh, this heterogeneous flow preferable for highly exothermic process such as uh, liquid phase liquid phase methanol synthesis and also hydrogenation of MAC the last one is the slug flow slug flow is observed in smaller reactor diameters at higher gas flow rates bubble slugs are formed due to the wall restriction where the large bubbles are stabilized by the column wall as we can see uh, in this flow regime the size of the bubbles are equal to the size diameter of the column okay reactor diameter has a major role in slug flow characteristics where the smaller the diameter of the column the more sustainable the slug In the bubble column reactor, there are three types of bubble column. The first one is the cascade bubble, co bubble column. The second one is the peg bubble column. The third one is the bubble column with static mixes. And the last one is the bu multi layered bubble column. Okay, these few types, different types of bubble columns have been introduced for particular requirement of different chemical process in industries. They also, they also have been performed to minimize or overcome the bigger bubble size distribution problem. It also designed to keep bubble size distribution uniform for better mass transfer. The first type of the bubble column is the cascade bubble column. Cascade bubble column consists of trays which contain holes to allow the bubble to flow through the column and also rearrange the gas distribution, therefore the large bubble can be eliminated. The advantage of this bubble column is effective counter current flow and also the mass transfer process is intensified. The second type is the pack bubble column. By installing the packing, it can reduce the back mixing of gas and liquid phase. Pack bubble column also reduces the non-uniform distribution of bubble gas over the cross section due to the coalescence and the breakup of the bubble gas. Next is bubble column with static mixes. This bubble column usually operated in cold current mode. The mixer in this column is used to break the bubble and reduce the bubble coalescence. Therefore, this can provide homogeneous bubble flow distribution in this column. The last one is the multi-layered bubble column. Multi-layered bubble column consists of fruit. When the bubbles between two roots are getting bigger, the bubbles can be break by the root and prevent the bubble to grow more bigger. Other than that, it can prevent bulk secretion in the column and produce uniform bubble gas distribution. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Azir Khaira Binti Osman, 1182308. I will continue with the application of bubble column reactor. In reaction engineering, three-phase bubble column reactors are widely employed. For example, in the presence of catalyst, and in biochemical applications where the microorganisms are utilized as solid suspensions in order to manufacture industrially valuable bioproducts. 
Hmm. Bubble column reactors are also used, especially in chemical process involving reactions such as oxidation, chlorination, alkylation, polymerization, and hydrogenation. In gas conversion process, it involves manufacture of synthetic fuels. In biochemical process, it involves in fermentation and biological wastewater treatment. <laughs> Another application of bubble column reactor is uh, fissure troughs. This process is a collection of chemical reactions that converts a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen into liquid hydrocarbon. This process is to produce transportation fuels, methanol synthesis, and manufacture of other synthetic fuels, which are environmentally much more advantageous over the petroleum. Okay, next we move on to the advantages of bubble column reactors. Bubble column reactors provide advantage both in design and operation as compared to other reactors. First and foremost, these reactors require low investment cost and less maintenance. This is due to the simple design of the reactor. This bubble column reactor much more simple design because it does not contain any moving parts. Also, the construction can be made much lighter because it does not have a big and heavy component. Next, the cleaning is also very easy and it also has a good gas transfer. Lastly, the bubble column reactor have excellent heat and mass transfer characteristics, meaning high heat and mass transfer coefficients. Mm. Okay, next is the dis disadvantages of bubble column reactors. Okay, here the Parameters such as temperature and pH are less well controlled. This uh, reactor also can occur the back mixing in liquid phase. This may result in lower conversions and unfavorable selectivity. Next, foam may be created due to the high amount of gas pumping through the system. Forming in chemical reactor, especially in this bubble column reactor, might reduce the liquid volume available for desired reactions. A bubble column reactor which experience forming can result in up to 80% or more in the reactor volume being occupied by gas and consequently at most only about 20% of the volume of the reactor is available for the desired conversion. And last and one of the most major disadvantage of a bubble column is that this reactor will not work with liquid that have high viscosity if the viscosity is higher than about 100 times the viscosity of water then the energy from the gas is usually not enough to create sufficient mixing Mm. I think that's all for me and that's the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.